guys, it's Queen DJ, and in today's video, I will be reacting to episodes 1 and 2 of March Comes In Like a Lion. You know, let me say something real quick, because it, it's the funniest coincidences with some of these shows, you know? I mean, mm, Love Tina One of the Delusions was a Netflix show, and, well, recently got on Netflix, and I had been wanting to watch that show for, like, the longest time, and you know how, like, some people, when they put a show on their Netflix queue, like, it's something that, yes, they really want to watch, but they kind of save it for, like, that one day, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna watch it whenever that one day comes, and then, you know, one of my Patreons is like, hey, watch this show, and I was like, oh my god, like, how the hell do y'all know, and then, so, I, I was like, okay, I'll watch it, then, out of nowhere, one random day, when I was asking my Patreons, I was like, okay, like, let me know what you guys want me to watch next, and I see it. March comes in like a lion. And so I'm like, why does this name feel familiar to me? So I go on Netflix and it's on my Netflix queue as well. And I'm like, I was saving this, uh, this show also for a rainy day. And I'm guessing today is that one rainy day, even though it's not raining outside in Florida today. But I swear y'all be looking at my Netflix queue or something. Because I'm sitting here, I'm like, how the hell do y'all wonder? Like, figure out these were the two shows I wanted to watch that are on my Netflix queue right now. I mean, mm. <laughs> like y'all be get looking at that list any list of any shows and be like hmm DJ probably hasn't watched that and the next thing you know I see it I'm like oh fuck like god damn it I was gonna watch this on my own <laughs> but it's so freaking hilarious I'm like oh my god but I really know nothing about this series I've heard good things about this show um from other people who I follow and talk to from time to time. Um, some people that I've seen on Twitter talking about it a, a lot and saying that it's one of the most amazing shows that they've ever seen and everything. So I'm like, okay, like, yeah, let's give it a try. I think, is this going to make me cry? I, I don't know. I feel like it is. It's, it, this is going to probably be one of them shows that might get into my feelings and probably by the end of the 47 episodes or 44 episodes I think this show has I'm not 100% sure by the time we do finish this I probably will be in my feelings a lot because if you know me from the four years that I've done YouTube I have literally cry like I always say like I'm not gonna cry in an episode and then probably by the time we get to either like the first few minutes the halfway point or by the end of the damn episode I'm like a hot mess and <laughs> Whatever happens, happens. But other than that, guys, let's go ahead and get started with episode one in three, two, one, go. Now, I know there's going to be some people probably wondering um, what copy I'm watching. I'll put it in the comments so that everybody knows. Okay, well, that was a nice way to start. Okay. I, I have questions, though. Even though it's, like, the first couple of seconds less than a minute. Yeah, this show's gonna make me cry. I, I just, I know it. I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it. Like, you don't start an opening like that and not, like, think you're not gonna cry with this show. And I'm guessing this kid, he's must have had like the most tragic past. Maybe maybe he ran away from home. And I've heard this song way too much. But it is a good song though. But yeah, he could be a runaway. Like, what's his face? I'm weathering with you. But I don't want to assume. His name is Zero?
You poor baby. So I'm guessing you live on your own now? Yeah. God damn, I want water now. <laughs> And the water's reflecting off of his hair. Possibly indicating that he all he's always been drowning. Why do I feel like he seems like a child, pro uh, yeah, child prodigy? Possibly. Not him. Or is that no, cause that looks like L from Death Note. Shogi? Is that what he is? Like, he's a shogi player? So then you must be a shogi prodigy. Oh, oh my god, he's so cute. Well, you're just starting conversation. I mean, that's typically how some people start, but it's just a random thing to say for it sometimes.
Excuse me. It had to be too much for you. I mean, to go from such a smiling baby, baby, precious baby boy, to just... Mm. If that was his sister, fuck his sister. Can we kick her in the, in the fu Can we punch her in the face? Like, what? What's her deal? Answer honestly. I just feel so bad for him. I'm guessing he had a really, like, bad childhood growing up. I mean, Shogi was, like, his way of coping, possibly. But maybe that possibly got a little too much for him. And plus, dealing with at uh, home with his family. She's so cute. Oh my God. Are you Ayamu? Oh my God. Oh. Wait, hold on. I think I know who the little girl is voiced by, and she's already best girl for me. If she is voiced by one of my other favorite BAs who played my other babies, and oh my god! <laughs> She's so fucking cute. <laughs> Did the cat just talk? Oh, that looks so good.
this child. Oh my god. This is going to be the best 40 something episode. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, oh my god! <laughs> Grandpa? Grandpa. Oh. He looks sweet and cute when he sleeps. Guitar. Damn it. <laughs> it always felt
Yeah, that too. Oh, you are so positive. <laughs> and there she goes. Look at the <laughs> Stop! Ah, oh, kitties. <laughs> What's up? Mm, I, I think science points to yes. Something tells me that because he is a prodigy, I mean, it, he see, it seems like he has a harder time to make friends with people. I mean, mm, God, do I want to compare it to a certain character who is also a shogi player? Probably at the end of the episode, yes. <laughs> but from the first episode in, I can see how they're both very similar to each other. Probably you know who I'm talking about, but if you don't, we'll find out at the end of the video. Oh, Hina, you are just so fucking adorable, but not as adorable as your sister Momo! <laughs> Nothing better happen to this damn child, I swear to God. And 
Who the hell goes into someone's mailbox and takes it? Hello? Who? Uh, hold up, no. You, you don't end like that. No, 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 no. Okay. This is very interesting. I like the first episode. Like, that was a really good way to start. I mean, this is going to be a very, not a long journey, not as long as Monogatari was. Because Monogatari was, like, literally the longest series that um, I did a reaction video to. And I'm glad I still did this. This kind of gives me Monogatari feels, feels at times, but... It's different. I'm not gonna like immediately like 100% instantly compare it, but just a little similarity, little touches here and there. Um, Ray, I like him a lot, but he seems like a kid who has a really bad tragic past. Momo and her old, her two older sisters also seem like that as well, because usually the people who smile the nicest have like the worst backstories and such, and they've been hurt. Um, even up until now. So with Ray, the fact that, you know, the first half of this episode, we didn't get to see him smile. But as a kid, he was super duper happy and upbeat. And then you got these two girls and this one girl's looking back at him. Want to punch that bitch in the face? I'm just saying. Um, and you just feel bad for this kid. I just, I want to know. I have so many questions about it. But hold up, you telling me like somebody... Uh, murdered his father or was the father murdered his kid what i might to go back and look at that because like oh my god are you serious oh my god momo stop it like oh my god momo is so fucking bad and the fact that she is voiced by one of she's not my number one because everybody knows that um say uh I can never say her name Sayori Hayami who's literally in everything that is my number one favorite female VA Momo's VA she she's in my top three because she's also playing like several other characters that I've literally loved and I'm like hey I'm gonna protect her from like any of the fuckers in the world because. She's so good at playing little kid characters because she plays, like, besides this girl and um, freaking Elle from Sinfo Gear, she also plays Nina from Idol Master Cinderella Girls and um, What's Your Face from Kiznaiver, which is, like, my ultimate favorite character in that show. But, like I said, she plays little kids so freaking well to, like, any time when I see her as a little kid character in a series, like, I can't help but cry because she's just so freaking precious. But since Momo is the youngest, and Momo probably doesn't know about the tragic past that Hina and um, the oldest sister has experienced from however old those two are so let's just say because Hina looks like she's in junior high school so she might be at least like 13 maybe 14 and the oldest might be in her early to maybe late 20s maybe I don't know but I mean mm, so now you're telling me both mom and grandma passed away and mm, god that hurts so then where where's their dad did, did their dad just run off on them I mean, because, like, Grandpa's there, but... Ochoza! <laughs> like, <laughs> where's Dad? <laughs> I mean, mm, where is the father at? That's the biggest thing that I'm kind of also wondering. This murder thing that I'm wondering, what the hell? Like, what does that mean? But Ray feels like a kid who drowns you the the way the water reflected on his hair and even when he was sleeping he's drowning all the freaking time and so that really concerns me and I'm really really scared for this kid and I'm like I want to know but at the same time I just want to like take him and hug him and be like whatever it is like that is in your mind right now I want you to talk it out but only really until you're ready and God, it's probably going to be a while for him to really, to see him open up more as a character. I mean, this is only the first damn episode right now. But, okay, going into who he reminds me of, and I really don't remember all of her confidant. I would have to re-watch someone do her confidant, because even though I've played this game 
three times now even because I had to fucking delete all my files because of PlayStation. Thank you PlayStation. Fuck you also. Um <laughs> I and maybe one day I'll probably binge the game over again. Maybe I'll uh stream it again because I do love the game so much. I am talking about um what the hell is her name? Oh my god. <laughs> the Shogi girl from Persona 5. Um Oh god. What the heck is her name? <laughs> oh my god! How the hell did I forget her name? <laughs> what the hell am I talking about? R-Y-L Confidant Guide. Um, what is your name? What is your name? I can't believe. Because, like, I, knew who, I know who I'm talking about. Because it's the freaking Shogi girl. I just don't remember her name. No, no, no. Not Kasumi, not say. You won't even let me. <laughs> It is, no, not, uh, no, I was about to say Kasumi, no, Baka, and then Kasumi, Kasumi is redheaded, and she's not redheaded, um, I'm about to see her, where is she, Hifumi, there we go, uh, okay, so Hifumi in the game, is also a shogi player, mind you. But it's more... Hers is... The situation that she goes through is really... Oh my god, bright freaking light. Thanks, son. Um, is with the fact is that, you know, the situation between her and her mom. And it seems like that is a little similar to, to um, Ray himself. But because she is such a professional shogi player and, like, a child prodigy, you can see how there were times where... When you're looking at Hifumi, like, it's eating away at her. And she wants to talk about it. And she's not ready to talk about it. She wanted to, you know, finally tell her mom off. And tell her, you know, this, this, that, and the third. And when she finally did it, I was just like, yeah, I was like, oh my god, like, you need this. Like, mm-mm, because it's been eating away at her. And how her mom is such a, I mean, because almost everybody in Persona 5, all the fucking adults in Persona 5 Royal, whatever, are such assholes. I'm just saying, end of the day, if you not have, if you have not played Persona 5 Royal, go play it, please. I'm just going to tell you that now. But yeah, I mean, there were points where I looked at her and I was like, oh my God, you're just drowning in your own emotions. And you feel so bad for this girl and you feel bad for Ray as well. And so I'm hoping and praying to God that between episode two to the end of the series, he is able to smile again, even though we saw him smile in this first episode and it felt very raw and genuine and sweet, but there's something else hiding behind that smile. And the more that we go into, the more we'll possibly get that answer. But we ain't gonna know until I start episode two. But yeah, go ahead and pause the video and I'll see you guys in one second for episode two. Okay, episode two in three, two, one, go. Okay, we're about to see the fat kid come up. No, yeah, there he is again. Okay. But still, once again, who the fuck? literally goes into somebody's mailbox and take the shit? Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, that's invasion of privacy, my good sir. Hello? <laughs> uh, wait for me. Good night. Mm -hmm. Bye, Bakugo. Oh my god! <sighs> Did we really consider ourselves friends by the way you opened the elevator, sir?
Well, you got in anyway. Do you know what I could do with an 80 day cruise? Oh my god. <laughs> ah. Damn, I want pizza now. God, see the. <laughs> uh, one of the many reasons why I love anime so much. You make me hungry for food that I probably can't get right now. <laughs> Because nobody feel like going to the store or anything to order some pizza. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry. Poor baby. This is his hell. <laughs> okay. One thing I do want to talk about going back to episode one. Excuse me. Um, the scene with the uh, the news saying that um, someone was murdered. And that the kid, the college student, his son is missing. You know, been gone for a certain amount. There has to be, of course, because, like, I'm thinking about it over and over again. I rewatched the scene over and over again before I started this episode. There is a connection. There has to be a connection between the person who died and the college student who is now missing between him and Ray. Don't know what it could be related, but then also looking at the fact that, you know, the two people who Ray was listening to um, their conversation saying that that wasn't really his son. So are we talking about the the kid who was now a runaway possibly, or are we talking about Ray? Now, if that is something that's going to get mentioned later on, don't tell me. If it, <laughs> whatever happens, this is what we're going to do with this series, and I should have said this in the first episode. If it's anything important from now to the final episode, what I want you to do, you can make a big old comment, Put that read more-ish into it so that eventually if I need to come back to this episode or any other episode, then I'll come back, read it and such. Because if you just go ahead and put the freaking answer right there in the comment, I'm going to get spoiled no matter what. I would not like to be spoiled with this show. Thank you. Of course. I get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you place them in the back of your mind and just... There. Sunny Florida. <gasps> and you are? <laughs> I'm guessing you're another shogi player as well. Uh-huh. Just keep really like, go ahead, Ray. Oh, okay. Isa? Twenty Alexa, shut up. 
Bitch ass, I wasn't even talking to you. But 26, damn. Isa? Did you lose? Yeah, this is going to be one of them shows that I'm literally going to have to, like, look up some more things about Shogi. I mean, I don't even know Jack-ish about chess, because chess is not my thing, but I still would like to know about this, because I have a lot of questions. Because I know it's very similar to chess. Unfortunately, Isa, I think it is. That's game. Oh, sorry, Isa. Mm. Oh. Yeah, come on, let's go out for a drink. Yeah, I mean, he can't drink. I, I drink to that. I mean, hi, liquor. You see the apples? Oh my god. I am hungry. <laughs> and I have just a completely different aura. Mm -hmm. That too. <laughs> it's that aura we have <laughs> hey 
You can't do an IOU? <laughs> yeah, I mean, plus you're a minor. I mean, we don't want that on our backs. No. I know he hasn't eaten. Oh my god, he's so cute even when he wakes up all groggy. <laughs> Yeah, that and save. <laughs> mm, that's Florida right now. Hot as hell today. Oh. Yeah, but you can't always eat. Huh. But you can't always have fast food. You need to at least have a nice home cooked meal every once in a while. Almost every day. And then blue moon. It's because of the way you look at it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But now you see the world in color. Because of those three. Because, I mean, they feed you. They let you sleep at their house. They're like your other family from your actual family. Oh my god. I hate 
mamá. No, I mean, you guys probably cook really good food, but, I mean, mm. Oh, hello, Hina. Oh my god, chicken sounds so good. <laughs> mm. Okay, her aura, I mean, mm. you don't want to make her upset, don't you? Dude, oh my god, son. Oh. Well, yeah, because she's so young. Oh my god, she's so, oh my god, she's so cute. Cats, ten, ten. <laughs> you know, it makes me wonder how long has it been since he's taught to his family? Because there is a butt. Oh. Oh my
Yeah, because you need to eat a home-cooked meal every once in a while. You can't always eat instant. Okay. Jesus, like, oh God, like, so the person, the car accident, which is his dad, his family, his whole family, is that what it is? Context, please, I need something on that, like, oh my God, you can't, you can't just put that in and expect me not to freak out and ask questions on that ish. I need that context. Who, it had to be his dad, or at least his whole family. Ooh, okay, can we take back what I said about the little girl in episode one? I mean, unless that little girl was still being a bigot to him. But, oh. You poor baby. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry over this kid again. Oh my god. Can I just say... Thank God Akati found him when he, when she did because he could have died. He was nothing but, like, he was so skinny. Oh, my God. I'm about to cry over it. I can't. Damn it. Oh, my God. This is all we have. Oh, God. Christ. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, okay, let me say this, like, <laughs> Ray's, like, rival of Fred. <laughs> I do like him. He seems like he's a little bit of a nuisance, and Ray is just like, you know, I'm just, I just tolerate you, dude. Like, mm, you, you cool, but, like, nah, like, we ain't cool. <laughs> we friendly, but we ain't friendly, friendly like that. But he seems very funny. I think I'm gonna like him a lot. He kind of gives me Dotto vibes from Steins Gate. <laughs> <laughs> but oh my god like seriously you feel bad for Ray so much like thank god like I said Akati came in at the right time like Akati, Hina, and Momo are like his, his guardian angels like oh my god who just came in at a really bad time in his life just to make his life better because before he moved to this town as he said he used to see everything in black and white even when he started living in the town he saw the city and everywhere he would go to in black and white until these three showed up in his life. And for a good reason. I mean, because if she didn't find him that night, he would have died. Like, think about that. Honestly, I mean, this kid, he, this kid is skinny, but I mean, he still eats right. Thank God, because Akari, thank you, but... I mean, yes, you cannot always survive on <laughs> instant ramen and sweets and everything. You always still have to have a nice home cooked meal. I mean, you know, as someone who like who really, really wants to lose weight because I don't like the way I look. Yes, I look pretty as hell, but I'm like at the same time, like just as much as any guy or any girl, we all have that moment when we look at ourselves in the mirror and we don't like or we're not comfortable, like, the way we currently look right now. And we're all trying to do our damn best, even 
in quarantine right now, pandemic, shit like that. I mean, it, it happens to all of us, especially like when the new year comes and you're like, okay, this is my year. This was me last year going into 2020. Like, this is my year. This is the year that I'm going to do this is X, Y, and Z, yada, yada. And then <laughs> Corona was like, not today, bitch. Like, mm -mm. and so I, I mean, you just got to keep going. You got to be positive about it and just take it one day at a time. But this kid has possibly been through a lot. And I mean a lot, a lot of crap. And you have to feel bad for him. And you're just like, <sighs> you think, I feel like it's just going to get worse for him. I mean, mm, I'm looking at that little, th just like his, his face, his default face, not his, when he's smiling, but the face that we've seen for now, officially two episodes where he just, he always looks sad and you just want to know and you just want to go over to him and be like, oh my God, like what's wrong and stuff. And as someone who has a resting bitch face and some people think like, I'm always like mad or sad, like 24 seven when I am not and stuff. And it gets a little annoying when he has to tell people like, no, I'm okay. Like Jesus Christ. Um, but with him, the fact that he barely really has any friends, um, technically his teacher is kind of his friend Issa Smith um the three sisters and anyone else who we're going to meet eventually later on into this series are still his friends but I mean he still feels distant to me like even though he has all these great people around him he it feels like he has a wall I mean his wall has been taken down by the sisters of course but like if we're looking at someone as Issa or um Bakugo's VA's character or anybody else he still puts that wall up and it's just that separation between him and somebody else until he really truly gets comfortable with someone he finally lets that guard down and he's just a little teeny tiny bit happier you don't always maybe see it in his face but maybe in his body language and the way he speaks and so I mean like oh god this kid I just I love him so much and I just want like I want him to have everything I want everything to be good for him but I got a lot of questions on that car accident and I mean mm, hello like just give it to me I need that it's like hello I just, you, you can't do that you just can't and this is going to be eaten away at me until I watch the next two episodes on Sunday. Jesus, like, you you can't, like, who starts the first two episodes like this and expects you to be like, oh, hey, mm, you gotta wait till next week to watch next two. I can't even imagine, like, when this was airing week after week and episode two comes and ends and everybody's like, <laughs> like oh my god I, I can't imagine that I'm like mm. that's why I'm, I'm happy that with this show even though it is over I can just binge it like that but still like at the same time you, no <laughs> like who does that but I mean honestly for um for the first two episodes I mean that's a really damn good way to start a series and I honestly cannot wait to see what will happen for the rest of the series how this show will end how Ray, um Akati Hina and Momo are gonna grow as people how everyone else are gonna grow as people and characters and what are the struggles and difficulties that they're gonna face within you know from episode three to the end of the series but yeah other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards episodes one and two of March Comes In Like a Lion. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys officially all next Monday for everybody else. And next Friday for Patreons for episodes three and four. Bye, guys.